Hey YouTube, welcome back to Axis and Allies the Garrison. This is Detroit coming to you from the bunker here in Rochelle Park, uh, New Jersey. Another episode of the YouTube Wars. It is Axis and Allies the Garrison here uh, once again. All right, listen, it is episode 5.2, no correction, 5.1, Germany's turn, Dutch Lancaster is up, and I can promise you he is not going to um, let us down. Definitely the German Warmacht is still on the prowl, very much on the offense. I am just absolutely amazed at how much uh, how much efficiency, okay, typical of uh, Germany, correct? Uh, how much efficiency uh, Dutch Lancaster has shown with his war against the Soviet Union. I'm very, very impressed. He has been very effective at neutralizing the allies in the Atlantic, has been a great ally to the Italian uh, player, uh, Hilltop Pillbox, okay, who had who has himself been performing really well, okay, and needless to say, he's been given our, our nemesis, VK Cowboy, who is the Russian player, commander, a very difficult time, but in all fairness to Cowboy, Cowboy himself has been up to the task and has been showing what he is, all uh, what he's made out of, okay, so Cowboy has not let us down, and he's definitely been able to fight back effectively. Okay, good for Cowboy. In any case, guys, it is episode 5.1, uh, beginning of round, five, uh, of round 5. Okay, we hope that you enjoy this episode. And as always, let us know what your thoughts are. Hope you enjoy this episode. All right, guys, uh, it is the beginning of round 5.1. It is Germany's turn, and Germany is currently under the command of Dutch Lancaster, who has been performing a really good job at pushing uh, the Russians, or at least at holding the Russians at bay uh, on the northern flank of the Eastern Front, and has been very effective at pushing the uh, Russian Red Army all the way up to the uh, frontier here with uh, the city of Stalingrad, Volgograd. Okay, so very interesting. Uh, the Germans have been successful at doing so. Let's hope that, uh, at least for the sake of the Axis, that they can continue with that trend. It is the beginning of round five, and that is the current ground situation on the Eastern Front. Now, what's going on here on the Atlantic Theater side of the war? Well, the Germans for now are pretty much in control of the northern, northern Atlantic, where they have several, uh, what is it, um, uh, U-boat wolf packs. Uh, on the northern northern Atlantic. However, down in the southern uh, uh, or central Atlantic, you have the U.S. making its presence felt. The U.S. has a fleet in season 104 and a very large fleet in season 91. Now, this is definitely a situation that Germany cannot tolerate. Uh, Germany uh, will be attacking season 91 because a U.S. Naval presence in sea zone 91 means then that there's a potentiality of an attack on Europe's southern flank or as uh, Churchill once called Italy, the, the soft underbelly of the Axis powers. So there's always that potential that the U.S. may capitalize and go for a, an attack on the uh, Axis powers uh, south, uh, southern uh, flank. However, fortunately for the Axis, the Axis do have a very powerful combined Axis fleet where you have in season 92, I believe, is it 92? Uh, I believe so. Uh, yeah, 92, you have a combined German, Italian Axis fleet. And this is something that the U.S. will have to uh, deal with. And maybe there will be a battle today. Okay, so not maybe, there will be a battle in season 91, let me make that declaration right now, okay, where the Germans will be attacking the U.S. fleet in season 91, okay, and let's, uh, okay, go over to the eastern seaboard where the U.S. already has a buildup of additional naval assets in season 101, okay, so definitely very interesting what's going on here, uh, it is round five, the beginning of round five, uh, it is episode 5.1, okay, the uh, the uh, German player, Dutch Lancaster, will be starting his round, his turn, 
with a total of 61 IPCs of which you'll be spending by purchasing two infantry ground divisions, one artillery ground division, one minor industrial complex, a fighter squadron and one tactical bomber squadron and three submarines. Also, in okay, case since uh, the time has uh, arisen, uh, Dutch Lancaster has announced his weapons technology and his weapons technology technological development is uh, enhanced artillery or super artillery. Now, what enhanced artillery does is that it allows for a single artillery division to move two movements instead of one. So, in other words, an artillery, uh, uh, an enhanced artillery can blitz through uh, one and two territories and can then go on to support an additional two infantry that will be attacking at two. So just to recap here, an, an enhanced artillery allows an artillery division to blitz, to move at two, and allows for the support of two additional ground infantry units that will then attack at two. So just to give you an idea, one artillery division supported that supports two infantry can literally attack with three pieces at two. So it's a very interesting piece that Dutch Lancaster has chosen, okay, for his weapons development. All right, so let's go ahead with the declarations of uh, battles or the order of battles that are going to be fought. As I stated previously, season 91 has been declared. The Germans will be attacking. <clears throat> and of course, I still have this lingering cough from my uh, session with uh, with the flu, but I'm slowly getting better, and uh, I feel a lot better, and I think I sound better too. All right, so let's uh, make the movement. So Germany will be attacking with three, four, five, six submarines coming from season 92 into season 91. The German carrier, right, the Graf Schaplin, Graf Schaplin will, be movement, will be moving at a movement of one. On board the carrier, the carrier will be, will be deploying its tactical bomber and fighter squadrons that will be joining that attack as well. Okay, so as so far, six submarines, carrier, a tactical bomber, and one fighter squadron at a movement of one. So the aircraft will have one movement left in the fuel gauges. Actually, no, that'll be three movements left in the fuel gauges. Okay. Additionally, we have a fighter squadron and tactical bomber squadrons coming from Germany at a movement of, of uh, one, two, three, and four. Okay. These aircraft will have one movement left in their fuel, ga fuel gauges. Let's keep in mind that there is an air base in Western Germany, which allows these aircraft a movement of five in their fuel gauges. Okay, so that means then that it'll, it'll be in this attack, six, a wolf pack consisting of six submarines, two tactical bombers and two fighter squadrons accompanied by an aircraft carrier. Okay, so that's the first battle. And that's uh, it for this battle. The second battle is the battle for season 104, okay, where you have a U.S. task, a naval task force of two destroyers, this wolf pack consisting of three submarines coming from season 109 will move south at a movement of one, all right, and you have a destroyer moving south at a movement of one and two will join the, the wolf pack and will uh, attack the two defending U.S. naval destroyers in season 104. And that's the second battle. All right, the third battle will be the battle for the Baltic states. Okay, in this battle, you will have two infantry going in from Poland, accompanied by two artillery. Then there's an additional third artillery coming all the way from Germany. Remember, Germany now has advanced artillery that can move at two, one and two, right, and will be attacking the Baltic states. Keep in mind, excuse me, keep in mind that uh, in theory, all of three artillery here could support up to six 
uh, ground infantry divisions. Okay, so however, that's not the case here. To you only have two, but just to give you an idea that if that were the case, three ground, three artillery units in theory could support up to six ground infantry attacking at two. All right. Okay. So second battle is the battle for Eastern Poland. Okay. In this battle, all right, you have one artillery, one mechanized infantry. Sorry, I, I, let me pan in there. One additional infantry coming from Poland itself. Okay, the mechanized infantry and artillery, artillery divisions came from Hungary. And there's an additional artillery coming from Germany itself at a movement of one and two. So in Eastern Poland, you'll have two artillery, one ground infantry, and one mechanized infantry attacking. All right. And last but not least, the big battle, the battle for Bryansk. Okay, in this battle, you'll have six armored divisions coming in from, coming, uh, heading due north. And will attack, okay, with six armored divisions, two infantry, and one artillery division coming from Rostov. Okay, in addition, from the Ukraine, you have two mechanized infantry, one artillery, okay, joining that attack. Okay. Then you'll have two strategic bombers at a movement of one. These aircraft will have five movements left in their gas gauges. Okay, let me put that there. Okay, so these strategic bombers will have five movements left. Okay, the tactical bomber coming from the Ukraine at a movement of one will have in its fuel gauge three movements left. All right. Okay. All right. So from Poland, you have a tactical bomber and a, strate and a tactical and a regular fighter squadron that a movement of one, two, and three will join that attack. These aircraft, okay, that are joining the attack in Bryansk will have one movement left in their fuel gauges. All right. So what do the Russians have in Bryansk? Well, the Russians have two triple A's that will, are going to have to engage now. They also have four armored units, okay? And let's not forget that the Russians have the weapons development of super tanks. Super tanks allow uh, the, the, the country with that technology for its tanks to attack with four and to defend with four, okay? So that's a very powerful technology for the Russians to have, okay? So that's four armored units or four uh, armored divisions, two triple A's, two infantry divisions, four artillery divisions, and a British Spitfire, a British fighter squadron that was flown in previously by the British from Eastern Persia, okay? And that's what's defending Bryansk against the German Blitzkrieg here. All right, so... Let's go ahead with the actual combat and we will come back. We will return to you with the uh, results of the combat. All right, so let's review the results of the order of battle. Okay, the battles were resolved already. The battle for season 91 led to a total uh, loss for the U.S. fleet in season 91. The entirety of the U.S. fleet in season 91 was sunk. It was a loss of two, destro uh, two destroyers, a cruiser, five submarines, a fully loaded carrier with its complement of uh, two fighter squadrons and three naval transports were lost to the Germans. However, on the return fire, the Germans did sustain a loss of five naval submarines, which I'm going to be taking out now. Okay, so that's five su German submarines were uh, sent to the bottom of the sea. Okay, uh, as well as two tactical bombers, one fighter uh, squadron for the Luftwaffe were also lost, and the Graf uh, Zeppelin aircraft carrier was also sunk. All right, so remaining was the Okay, um, with a single German U-boat in season 91 along with one 
uh, Fighter Squadron over Season 91. All right, battle for Season 104. Okay, the, the U.S. fleet in Season 104 consisting of two destroyers was sunk. Okay, uh, the attacking German Wolfpack and destroyer did not sustain any losses. Very interesting. Okay, very uh, fortunate turn of events here for the uh, Germans. They did not sustain any losses. All right, so let's go over to the land battles on the Eastern Front. Okay, the Germans, okay, uh, the Battle of uh, the Baltic States were able to take out the single Russian defending infantry division. The Germans themselves did not lose any units during the attack. Okay, same can't be said for Eastern Poland where the Russian uh, heavy tank was taken out, but not before during the return fire phase taking out one attacking German inf ground infantry division as well. Okay, now the, the, the titanic battle in Bryansk. Okay, needless to say, the, the defending Allied forces were wiped out. Total of one British Spitfire, fighter squadron, four Russian artillery, infantry, and four German heavy uh, Russian heavy tanks, as well as two triple A's were lost, but the Russians did fight back and were able to return fire, okay, where the Germans lost three armored divisions themselves, two mechanized, okay, and two artillery divisions were taken out, all right, so it was, it, the, the victory did not come easily or cheaply for the Germans, okay, Battle of Bryansk. So, just to recap here, Bryansk was taken, okay? The Germans are pushing deeper now into the Soviet Union, all right? Eastern Poland also uh, fell, as well as the Baltic states. And let's not forget the two uh, sea battles uh, for sea zones 104 and 91. All right, let's go ahead with the non-combat movements phase of the game. Okay, the remaining German Luftwaffe fighter squadron will be landing. It only has one movement left in its fuel gauge in Gibraltar. Okay, let's keep in mind you have two Italian artillery and one infantry division defending Gibraltar that are Italian. So that fighter will be landing in Gibraltar. It, 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 what is it? Italian occupied Gibraltar. All right, so. Let's go with the additional non-combat movements. The U-boat in C-Zone 112 will be moving, moving at a movement of 2, 1, and 2. And will be performing convoy duty in C-Zone 109. All right. The naval transport, C-Zone 93, will be taking on one German infantry division at a movement of 2, 1, and 2. And it will drop off its cargo of one uh, infantry division in southern Italy, okay, the German uh, artillery division in West Germany at a movement of two, it could either be railroaded or it could move on its own power at a movement of two, will be moving south into Italy, southern Italy at a movement of two, so in southern Italy you have one German infantry and one artillery division in southern Italy, along with uh, the uh, German naval transport in sea zone uh, 97, correct? Yes, 97. All right. The one infantry division in western Germany at a movement of three will be railroaded into one, two, and three into Romania. Okay, the three inf infantry divisions in Germany. Okay itself in Germany proper will be moving at a movement of three, one, two, and three will be moving into Bessarabia. So that's a total of three infantry divisions in Bessarabia. Okay. The two triple A's in Slovakia, Hungary will be moving to one space and will be reinforcing Eastern Poland. That was just taken from, retaken from the Russians I think probably for a third or fourth time in this conflict. 
All right, Baltic states, uh, nothing going on here. Uh, the five uh, German uh, infantry divisions in Finland and the Northern Army Group will be moving into uh, Karelia. So you'll have six infantry divisions in Karelia. Okay. And I believe, oh, the aircraft, all of the German aircraft that, are, that participated in the attack in Bryansk will just be landing in the Ukraine. Doesn't matter how many movements they have in their fuel gauges, all of these aircraft will be landing in the Ukraine itself. Okay, so that's that. All right, so let's go ahead with the placements of the purchased uh, units that Dutch made for the German uh, Reich. So the three subs that were purchased will be going into season 105, okay, off the coast of Normandy Bordeaux, which is one of the provinces of uh, German held uh, France. So that's three submarines that are going to be placed there, okay. Uh, you'll have two infantry and one artillery, okay, going to be placed in the Ukraine. Okay, and we'll be reinforcing the German Air Force that is already there that participated in the attack, okay, in Bryansk. All right, so, um, what else? Okay, so the German minor industrial complex will be going in Western Ukraine. Good placement, I like this placement. So now... You have one industrial complex in Western Ukraine. You have another one in Ukraine itself. This will give Germany, okay, the ability to project its power further, or at least to hold the Russian Red Army in this region. So it's a, it's a good purchase. I like that purchase that uh, uh, Dutch made very much. Okay, so the remaining pieces, the tactical bomber squadron and fighter squadrons, will be placed in Western Germany. And that's it for the uh, placements of newly purchased and recruited forces. All right, so let's go ahead with the income tracker. Germany will acquire one, two, and three additional IPCs. That brings up Germany's income tracker to a total of 52 IPCs. Germany does have two national objectives, one of which is that, <coughs> excuse me, Germany still controls Norway and Dunkirk, okay, while Sweden's still neutral. So that's a uh, national objective of five, okay. And then there is the uh, national objective of having one submarine in season 125, okay. So that's an additional five. So Germany will be collecting this round a total of 62 IPCs that, okay, will Germany will be carrying over to round six okay so that means now that officially yes officially germany has an additional three more rounds or three more turns to make before the game is over also let me announce that the uh, the axis powers of to date have a total of nine out of 12 victory points accumulated okay could be wrong but i'm pretty sure that the no it's 10 because I just realized that um, Italy does possess Cairo, and Cairo is a victory city, which means then that the Axis powers, as is, only have 10 out of 12 victory points. Two more victory points, and that's sufficient to win the game, okay? Keep in mind, okay, that the game has to be played to its completion all the way through the end of round 8. And the Axis powers must maintain at least a minimum of 12 victory points, okay, by the end of round eight. Then, only then, can they be considered the winners. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, guys. It is now VK Cowboy's turn. The Soviet Union is up. What will Cowboy do? Okay, uh, definitely uh, Dutch Lancaster has been... Uh, extremely efficient with his forces here in the, in the on the eastern front. Okay, he has maximized to the fullest the efficiency of the German Wehrmacht. Okay, and has been given the Red Army a, a handful. Okay, but of course, 
Cowboy is up to the task. And I'm sure that he will come up with some sort of response that will be satisfactory for his allies. All right, guys. It is episode 5.2 that is next. Soviet Union is up.